If you regularly feel pain in your arm while playing tennis, then this video is for you. Hi, I'm Seth Croisi, and thanks to tennis majors and all their videos, you can find out all there is to know about tennis equipment. We'll tell you what the pros use to be at their best and what you should use to have the most fun and win the most matches. In this new series of episodes, I attempt to recommend the best possible equipment according to your personal need. I will answer questions you probably ask yourself when you want to highlight your strength or fix something disturbing in your game. If you regularly feel pain in your arm while playing tennis, I will recommend equipment that will help you alleviate some of that pain. If you're in a lot of pain, you should definitely see a professional sports doctor, but I pretty much guarantee he will support all of my recommendations. <laughs> tennis is an asymmetrical sport, and it is bound to bring along some injuries if you play it enough, even if it's just a mild injury. If your technique doesn't always use the right biomechanics, or if your physical conditioning doesn't offset enough the imbalances created by the sport, you're bound to get injured one way or another. One part of the body that can definitely be affected by the equipment you use is the elbow. The whole area around the elbow is pretty sensitive. Independently from the strings you use, a racket that's flexible is basically going to absorb some of the shock from the impact of the ball. A more flexible racket will bend on impact and absorb some of the shock, but on the downside, it will restitute less power to the ball. So for somebody who tends to have problems on their elbow, I would definitely recommend something with a low stiffness rating. Low stiffness means high flexibility. And something that's also very important to mention is, contrary to what most people might think, using something that's too light for your strength level is actually not good for your arm. And the analogy that I like to use is like when you're throwing a ball against the wall. If you throw a tennis ball on the wall, you'll feel that it's pretty light. And if you're a strong person, that tennis ball will feel even lighter. And you're gonna feel your arm getting very, very heavy after a few throws. However, if you throw a baseball, it's gonna feel a lot easier. And the idea is that the baseball is gonna provide more lever for your arm to go. Whereas the tennis ball, your arm is gonna have to do all of the work. And it's kind of the same thing with rackets. You don't want to have something so heavy that you cannot swing, but you want something heavy enough for your strength level to actually help you accompany your arm when you're swinging your racket. The idea is you want your arm to do less of the work. Even though we've seen a lot of lighter rackets come out on the market as a result of better technology, and mostly for players who are not in the best shape, the fact is a racket that's too light can actually be very detrimental to you. And the lighter you go, the bigger risk you run of actually injuring yourself. As a side note, wooden rackets were the norm a few decades ago, and these wooden rackets weighed around 400 grams. Another thing that's definitely worth mentioning is the strings you use. The strings that are the most appropriate for players with injuries are going to be softer strings, like synthetic gut or natural gut. And if you're really keen on keeping your polyester string, then you should definitely try a hybrid setup. Personally, I actually used to play with an all poly string until I got a pretty severe case of tennis elbow. And to my surprise, just changing to a hybrid setup was actually the key that helped me get back on my feet. And if you want to find out more about strings, watch the second episode in our testing equipment series. So for somebody with an elbow injury, or a tennis elbow as we say, I think the most important things are gonna be the flexibility of the frame, how heavy the racket is, and the strings you use. Some of the rackets out there that are known to have a pretty low stiffness rating or high flexibility are the head gravity models and the Wilson Clash. There are other rackets out there, but what you're looking for is something that's heavy enough for your level of strength, and you definitely want to be using something a little bit softer in terms of strings. As a heads up, this Dunlop FX500 is the racket that I personally use, but it's not necessarily the racket that, that I would recommend for somebody with elbow injuries. On a final note, I'd also like to mention the grip size. You don't want to have to apply too much pressure when you're holding your racket. So choosing the right grip size, something that's not too small nor too big, is definitely gonna help you stay away from those nasty elbow injuries. Because grip size is something very personal, I can't possibly recommend you exactly what grip you should use. But if you want more information about grip sizes, you should definitely check out episode five of our testing equipment videos. If you like this episode, please share and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.